What's going on, everybody? This is James Grandmaster Facts Boyce, and you're here for another episode of the Facts Project. Today, very special guest, Mark Meyer. We are here to talk about so-called living. Thank you for being here. Issues one and four, one through four, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Absolutely. And the Kickstarter right now is for like three and four, and I got one and two right here, actually. Good. <laughs> You know what? Because we got a lot of questions about this now. Excellent. I know um, you, you, you're not the ordinary uh, com- indie comic book writer. Now, there, there's a, there, I, I could say this because uh, I've, I looked into your background. You you're pretty much sort of a renaissance person. You know, you you, you got your hands in a lot of cookie jars. I do. So, I, I love cookies. Uh, good, good. So do I. So after winter, got your YouTube channel, Board Game Coffee. Yep. Uh, you do love board games, which is which is right up my alley. I like that. And uh, of course, into the world of nerddom, you decide to create this comic, so-called mm-hmm. living. Now, if you could, um, bringing us back to issues one and two that you released, uh, about, I'm going to say what last year, correct? No, it was like in March of this year. Oh, so, so you've been really quick at this. Yeah, man, I'm trying to get up four books a year. Nice. So when you started this, hmm. interestingly, the genre of dark comedy sets in. Why so? What inspired that? Well, I, um, it's, it's a dark comedy. And you know what? Originally when I wrote it, I didn't think of make, setting up to make a dark comedy. I just uh, I set up a world full of monsters that um, live like me and you. Like it, mm-hmm. it, you could be a vampire, could be a werewolf, and we're just we know we, there's no secrets and we live in the world we we live in now except right. we, the civilization was raised with monsters so i kind of built that world i built rules for my characters and then i dropped them in there and and i just kind of watched them go and i just kind of wrote to see what happened so it's like once i built a personality for the characters i'm able to kind of separate them and watch them take on a life of their own and the dark comedy aspect comes out of i think my sarcastic nature like my normal, the, like the way I normally look at things, like I'm, I make fun of everything, but I mm-hmm. understand there's a seriousness to things, right? But just like comedy, you you say things to be funny, not not because you just not because you necessarily mean it, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I guess my humor tilts a little dark when I'm with friends and when I'm writing for my characters, it always feels like it's just a bunch of friends talking to each other and riffing off each other. So it the dark comedy just came out of, I guess, me and the characters I built in this world I set up. It wasn't something I set out to do. I actually didn't know what the, um, other than when I originally started, other than Jack turning into a vampire mm-hmm. and him learning to deal with that, that in a different way than you usually see in movies. I, uh, other than that, that's it. That's all I had. Right. And then I sat down and then I, I set other uh, plot points for him. I was like, okay, Jack, w- Jack wakes up. Now what? What would you, what would I do if I, okay, I need help. I'm a vampire. I don't know what to do. So I'm going to call my friends. So he does. And I was like, okay, who are his friends? And I established who his friends are. And then I put them together in a situation and be like, okay, we're, um, what would they do being the, based on the back, the backstory I gave them. And it all came out to be this dark comedy. And, uh, and I wrote basically characters I like to write. So Mm -hmm. There's a balance. A lot of the darkness comes actually from um, these vampire characters that show up in the first issue, Nick and Gasper. Mm-hmm. And then there's these um, mob characters that are really like, they're, they're not, they're no joking around. It's a dark comedy, but they're very serious. So you got Jack, who's a bit of like the goofball. And then you got the mob guys who are very serious people. And uh, I've compared it to this before. It's like the cast of friends being hunted down by the Sopranos. Yeah. See? So, that's kind of the vibe. Now, when we le- last left issues one and two, uh, Jack, of course, is just adapting to his brand new setting as being a vampire. So mm-hmm. how do we continue this saga in issues three and four? Well, the um, the story of him adapting is it kind of wraps up pretty quickly. Uh, okay. Well, it wraps like the the basic the the dumb little things that he's has to get used to like um you know uh what can he can he eat can he go out in the sun obviously not like there's typical vampire rules and they exist in mm-hmm. this world and he knows them like he's not an idiot but he wasn't a vampire a few hours ago so right. when he wakes up and he walks out into the street and it's sunny he catches on fire and he's just like like, like damn like, like, like dude throw a blanket over top of me i'm burning yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So things you just didn't think about. So issue one, he gets turned into a vampire. Issue two is a lot of the the silliness of him just getting used to the most basic rules of vampire. Don't go in the sun. Uh, you know, you're gonna need blood. You're gonna blah blah blah. Like there's, and he's and we introduce the world where everybody else knows the rules too. Like he's got yeah. little girls walking past him saying, "Shouldn't you like you shouldn't be out in the daytime?" He's like, "I know, <laughs> I know, I should be out in the daytime." So that's like one and two. Uh, that's what two does. And then once you start getting to three and four, um, there's a little bit of that, but less. Now the whole issue isn't about that anymore. Now right. it's establishing uh, Jack's new life and laying the groundwork for the bigger story. So that's what three and four does. So you get to see more of the mob. You get to learn more right. of their motivation. And so that that's what three and four do. That's what I'm about to say. Is this Jack's integration into vampire social groups now that like basically he is a vampire and this is kind of like where Nick and Casper kind of like jump in? Yeah, Nick and Casper, you 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 see them, they make a return in issue four. So they, they go missing for two issues mm-hmm. and then they show up in issue four and they show up with a splash. If you, if you look at the Kickstarter page and you see uh, the cover for book four, mm-hmm. you kind of get an idea of what's going to happen like it's the most action-packed cover i have where it's just just people just at each other just bodies rolled around each other like just a big brawl and that's kind of how they show up now up until that point the book hasn't it's not an it hasn't been like an action-packed book but issue four for me is the turning point to when things like the violence of the world inter uh, intermingles with Jack's like everyday, everyday person problems. Now I'm a vampire. Now what do I do? Like his problems are mundane, really, in this world. Right. Like turning to a vampire in our world, be a big deal. Be a big deal. If you turn into a vampire, it'd be a big deal. But in this world, you're like, now, yeah. now another what guy do I do? You know, I got to quit choir. I can't get into church. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so like he's got all these stupid problems. And then eventually they start getting dark. And issue four is really the the turning point of that. And I really enjoy one thing I really like enjoy is I enjoy writing for the mob and I get to do a lot of that. I get a lot, do a lot more of that in issues three and four. Now, now why is that? Uh, do, do, are you, are you a big fan of uh, mob movies? Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> I'm a fan of mob movies. I I kind of like that. Uh, I like the Scorsese. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also like, like there's the serious mobsters and there's also like the big baby mobsters like Sopranos where we're just like big spoiled children that yeah we play by our own rules and that's what they are. They're just big babies with guns and money. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, if you really look back at their, of how they are, it's just, they're just spoiled brats just going on and nobody's going to hold <laughs> them back. It's like, what would society be if there was no rules applied to you and you just do whatever, whatever the hell you want? That's them, right? Yeah. So, they have a violent temperament. They're very easily yeah, triggered. Exactly. And that's what, that's exactly how Mr. DeLuca, who's like the lead of this crime family that's chasing Jack, and Jack has no idea yet. Uh, as of one and two, he had no idea. He gets definitely, he definitely gets an idea of it in three and four. Ah, so you so. see, I, I have a little bit of consciousness. I, 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 I live in Jersey. So, to, right. so the Sopranos kind of is, is is near and dear. Uh, now, the 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 meanings of the classic movie monsters, the settings, the dialogues. Does your correlation to like sort of like a Dungeon Dragons vibe kind of like add to this to how you built this story up to where you're I, building a story on the fly? I've actually never uh, played Dungeons and Dragons. I played really? Dungeons and Dragons once, one time, one time I did. Okay, I got a, it was like a demo, so it was like a short session, and okay. that's because like I have I have like seven hundred board games. I have a board game night every Saturday. I play board games to uh, for my YouTube channel. Like I yep. record how to plays, so I'm big into that. And I was actually just turned down a job today. Somebody asked me to do a D and D job for them, and I was like, my channel doesn't really cater to D and D, not because I don't like it. It's because none of my friends will role play right like they can play they can play as like a little miniature and being like oh that's a guy that goes out there and does things but they can't put themselves in that role they're it's almost like a video game like i'm controlling nathan drake doing whatever nathan drake does but i'm not nathan drake right, right. once it once you turn that camera around you look at yourself that's when it kind of falls apart for them so um even though i had fun doing it but i don't have a group to do it so ah, okay. I, so i don't but I have written for video games. Like I've worked in the video game industry for 25 years. Okay. 
So I have experience writing for video games um, and I actually wrote, uh, I wrote, designed and did the artwork for the mobile game of 24. Mm. Uh, that was before iPhones and it actually won a BAFTA and it scored like a nine or 9.2 or something like that on IGN. Like based on the Kiefer Sutherland uh, show? Yeah, the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So that came out at a perfect time because like I love that show. And then I just started a new studio and uh, we had to prove that we could do 24. So they flew me down to LA. I talked to the license holders. I convinced them we could do it. And then it was pretty much me and a programmer. And then another program programmer came on at another point. And the three of us did the game by ourselves. Wow. And we won a BAFTA. It scored really well on IGN. They said, this is the way you're going to do a uh, this is how you do a like a video game based on a, an IP, like a television IP. Uh, the the writing got um, the writing got a lot of props, but it was all given to the writers of Twenty Four. They're like, you can tell it was done by the writers of Twenty Four. I was right. like, I did it all. <laughs> I was like, I wrote it all, and uh, I had to cross it by them because it was it was going into realms of the next season, and all that did was ruin the next season for me because I was a huge Twenty Four fan. Right. So like, oh no, you can't put that character in; they're gonna die. I was like, I don't want to oh. know. I don't want to, don't tell me that. <laughs> so it's like, it just ruined it for me. It's like, I'm a legit fan of 24. Fun fact, that's why uh, Jack is called Jack. Oh, okay. I actually wrote this script over 12 years ago. And when I was writing it, Jack was actually called Mark. And, mm -hmm. but I couldn't write for me. And that's when I learned I could not write for me. So I was trying to put myself in the position of this character. And I was like, okay, what would I do in this world? And I was like, I can't do it. And then somebody gave me the idea. They're like, why don't you change his name? Just change his name. It'll get you out of that mindset that it's you. So I was like, all right, I'll name it. I'll name him Jack. Mm -hmm. And, and um, because of, I was watching a lot of 24 at the time. So I did. And then just stuck with Jack and he kind of separated from me. Okay. And if, uh, if you read issue one, you learn that there's this kind of like a little bit of a joke where his girlfriend's name is Jill. It's Jack and Jill. And there is legitimately a panel that came by accident. It was, this was all kismet because her name was Jill when his name was Mark. So it was Mark and Jill. Right. And, and then, then I changed, changed it to changed Jack up. and it became Jack and Jill. And he actually chased her up a hill, just like in the nursery. <laughs> like, like they were up on a hill. Right. And um, and that was all a fluke because I, I I'm when I wrote it in the script I wrote like they went over a little little no like a little bump of grass mm -hmm. but Mark though the artist he drew it as them running up a hill so it was like oh Jack and Bill legitimately are, are on top of this hill <laughs> so um, it, it kind of just wrote itself <laughs> definitely yeah that, that's that's wild now being how this is like uh, been like your first go round into the indie comics from better yet comics in general. Um, what made you want to get involved in this being how, you know, you've, you've done other things you've, you've screen like you said, you screen wrote for, for a video game. You've basically, uh, you have this, uh, YouTube channel based on board games. What made you want to try your hand at comic book, comic books? Well, I've always, I always kind of, when I went, when I get into things and I get into things like hard. So like mm -hmm. I was big when I grew growing up, I was, it was video games. Uh, I, tr I tr played board games, but the only people, the only games I could play was like Monopoly, Risk, etc. And then okay. I and I read comics, right? So those are my three big entertainment things as a kid. I never really went outside. I wasn't a sports uh -oh. kid, right? So, got it. Um, so when it came to video games, I got into the video game industry. So like I was into it. I got into board games. Then I got into board game media. And then all the people that I watched and all the designers, like I'm friends with them now. Like I'm friends with some of these top designers, and and now. I wanted to get into comic books, which is the other thing that was I've always wanted to do, but I never thought I could because I am an artist, but I'm not a sequential artist. Right. And when I tried to do sequential art, it just took too long. It was too slow. It wasn't my thing. I was like, there's so many people that are better than it. And then I realized at some point, I think writing, if I'm going to get into comics, it's going to be writing. Right. So I was like, I want to do this, but I was like, I'm going to do it on the side. You know, I don't want to commit uh, like I don't want to quit my day job to do this. So I'm going to do it on the side. So I started and I wrote the script 12 years ago because I really wanted to do this. And I, lo I love comics. Mm -hmm. And, um, but back when I started, I tried to find an artist as a partner. So like, I wouldn't have to pay them as, cause no, like, like we wouldn't pay each other. Like we'd be partners 50, 50, the book made right. anything like, and that's, that's not a crazy idea. A lot of people no. do this, right? Yeah. A lot of people. So, um, but I couldn't, 
I, I had a hard time finding an artist that would commit that much time to a comic because they have a day job as an artist. So it's I'm like, about to say, I think you succeeded because the artist that you picked for the, now, this book. Yeah. Yes. So, and, but keep in mind the different situation. This was like 12 years later. And yeah. I decided I'm just going to find an artist and pay him outright. I'm not looking for a partner. I'm not looking for somebody to, you know, split this story and the responsibility with. I'm like, I'm going to pay you outright. And it's like a job for you. Right. So like, I love working with Marco. Mm -hmm. But Marco has made more money on this comic book than I have, <laughs> right? Because wow. he's paid. Right. And, you know, like I do the Kickstarter to help support uh, the printing. Mm -hmm. So, th and that's, and that's great. So but that's still, the game. Yeah. I have yet, I have yet to make back the money I've paid Marco. <laughs> Kickstarter right, right. helps with the printing, but then I eventually, eventually, because you can't make money if you go to cons being a nobody. Like I no nobody knows who I am in the in the comic book industry. Nobody knows my characters. You can't go to a con and expect to make a lot of money as a nobody in the beginning because like I did clear my table, but just barely. And there's people who like go and don't clear their table. I'm luckily no. enough that I have a product that looks professional enough that people come over and I I have no problem talking to people and I'm able to sell them on the comic. Mm -hmm. So I've always made my table and a little bit more and a little bit more is like you know like 50 bucks <laughs> which i gotta is say though the artwork that you you've chosen for yeah. every single issue is phenomenal the creative team aside from marco yeah. whoever's doing like colors and whoever's doing the lettering in here these this is not like independent novice work this is professional and, and that's what i was going for <laughs> So I tried really hard because I, I try to take my experience for the video game industry because I was a creative director for a lot of time for most of my career. And most of that is trying to make things, make video games look professional and um, work with artists and programmers to put out something that the user can understand and the user can appreciate and, and, um, and really get into. So I try to take that video game aspect and that video game director aspect and put it into comic books and like like I, the logo i like this logo here i designed the logo yeah. so i did that myself uh, the um and then i found marco who did the art for the covers the standard covers and the interior and he's getting better and better issues three and four look better than one and two because he's getting more familiar with it i found uh casby studios it's a collection of colorists mm -hmm. and uh they do the coloring and uh and lettering is i keep forgetting her name it's on here simona Simona De Napoli. I talk her. I talk to her the least. I always forget her name, <laughs> but she's she's friends with Marco. Um, but yeah, she uh, she does the lettering, and uh, she's been doing a good job. I get in there sometimes, and I add my own little flair into some of the lettering. But uh, yeah, the team is great. I'm good. so happy it came together, and I'm 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 happy that you noticed <laughs> that it's. Oh no, no, it, it definitely shows, and even even outside of the creative team. You've chosen a, another person that's pivotal to you because a family member, your wife is involved in this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, um, my wife, first and foremost, she's my biggest supporter. Like you always Excellent. get that, you always get that um, imposter syndrome, right? Like you write something and you're like, I'm, I'm shit. Like, yeah. like, this is this isn't any good and she's there to back you up and like it's good and it's like no matter how well you do like everybody feels this right and it's common i try to tell myself this i've been in the industry with artists for long enough that i know but comics is new for me and i feel like an outsider trying to like like push my way in there and it's i it feels so difficult because it's like i feel like i'm throwing out uh like i'm on an island and i'm throwing out a bottle with an sos letter in it and, and it's in a who's sea basically full of other that. bottles yep <laughs> so uh, so it's like it's it's crazy but yeah she's uh she she helps to edit she looks over all my stuff uh she does a lot of the back end a lot of back end work uh she's she basically wherever she can help me she does or right? she that's and, amazing and like this uh, the most important thing is having somebody that supports you yeah and uh like i quit my day job in office. Like I still work in video game industry as a contractor, mm -hmm. but there was a point where I just quit my day job and I just worked on the comic and she, she supported that. And I don't know a lot of partners that would be like, yeah, quit your job. Yeah, go your ahead. Dream. Yeah. No problem. Like we know it. we're probably not going to make any money on this, but just like go. Right. Yep. And that's, that's solid. Like you need it. You need the, the support and you need the good team because really a good team can take 
a shit idea and make it great. This is true. But like a shit team can't take a great idea and make it good. <laughs> or like they can they can take a good idea and make it shit, right? Which if you don't have a good team. So team is important and a support and the support is important. So you need you need that in place. Now and 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 that's excellent because you know, not, not a lot of people understand that like your support system, especially being an indie comic creator, hmm. if you're doing this all by yourself, I mean, you can get inside your own head sometimes. And that's just the worst feeling that you can have. You got anybody that's in your corner just going to lift you up. That's probably the biggest proponent to getting things done. Absolutely. Know, which is which is fantastic. Now. Canada. Hmm. Now you are from London, Canada, and um, what is the comic book scene like out there in Canada? Uh, I've, have you ever been to Canada? I have been to Winnipeg. Okay, well, the rest of Canada <laughs> is not like Winnipeg. Uh, <laughs> I kind of figured that. Winnipeg's cold. Yes, or it's either cold or littered with mosquitoes. Um, I've I've never been there, but I know people from Winnipeg. <laughs> right. So, uh, I he told me that there's like vans or trucks in the summer that drive up and down the street spraying mosquito the mosquito trucks. Yeah, yeah I used crazy. to have those in my neighborhood in Jersey. That's I mean, crazy. <laughs> so like, uh, anyways, the rest of Canada, you'll notice if it's 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 a lot like the states, right? Of course, uh, there's a slightly different vibe. Like if you're from one place and you go to the other, there's a different. It's like it's like you went to a like not quite a bizarre world, but you stepped into a reality that you're like. It's kind of like mine, but not. And you can't put mm -hmm. your finger on what exactly. It's kind of like sliders. Did you ever watch that old show, Sliders? I do remember. The, I do remember yeah. the show. So you, yes. it's like it's just like you got ported to a different planet. So from Canada, you went to the states or vice versa, and you're like something's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the money's weird color, or the, you know, but um, but yeah, the comic book scene is is good here in Canada. Although I noticed all the people I've met online that are the indie comic book creators. So many of them are from the States yes. and, and there's so many more cons and they're easier to find in the States. And, right. uh, and I'd like, so I'm a little jealous that way. Cause I'm, I joined like this group of lesser known mm -hmm. comics and uh, like, that's what they're called. They're called lesser known comics. So I joined their group to just kind of get in the chat so I could be with people that are doing the same thing I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And they're all like, most of them are Americans, like 90% of them are Americans. Okay. Right? So, um, and we meet every second Thursday and listening to them talk they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to New York comic-con. We'll just drive there. We're going to drive to San Diego comic-con. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I was like, I have to go across the border to do that. Yeah. And I got to get a passport. And getting a bunch of books to do, to get across the border, like you don't want to sneak them because if you Customs. sneak them, they catch you. You're you're busted. And if you pay for it, then you're. It's just that's that just hurts. So there, it's like, it's tricky, man. And it's expensive to travel all the way. Over yeah. There. And I can't like, it's it's harder to get like carpool <laughs> because it's like, oh, are you are you, are you near me? Are you passing by my state to go to this one? And it's like, it that's what it seems like. It's I know it's like it's a big country, but it feels like everybody's on the route past somebody else. In this right. Group. And I'm out here by myself being like, Hey, remember me on the, I'm on the Island of the guy throwing the ball. Oh man. <laughs> so nobody yeah. in upstate New York that could pick you up. Good Lord. Yeah. It's, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good scene here, but it seems lonely. And especially in London, Ontario, cause I'm, I'm originally from Toronto, which is like, okay. it's like the New York of Canada. Right. right. And um, that's where I was born and raised. And then I moved to London, Ontario, which is like two hours away for, okay. uh, for work. Um, but London is very low key. It's a very low okay. key. They say they're a big city, but I think people who've lived here who told me they're a big city. It's not a big city. Like you, you go to Toronto, that's a big city. Toronto mm -hmm. seems, sorry, London seems very much like a small city. And there's a lot of, things going on here but as far as comic book groups and things that really like have a presence or do something big i don't see a lot of it here like mm. so that's where i kind of feel left out so i'm a little jealous about uh all you guys in the states <laughs> so I'd, I'd love to be there and be in the yeah. groups it's the same thing with the board game channel. Like I have so, so all the, like some of the biggest board game channels or most of them are in the States. And I know, I know them all and they're all on each other's shows. They pop up. I mean, it's like, it's more work for them to come over here. Yeah. And the one, the one big channel that I am friends with, he's in like uh, Prince Edward Island, I think is where he's like, it's, it's the okay. other end of the country. Like he's far. It, it, he's, yeah, he's it's nowhere close. Like the North like, of the Northeast. Yeah. It's be, 
it'd be cheaper to like fly anywhere in the States than it would be to go see him. Right. So like flying inside Canada is not cheap. So it's that that's what it feels like. I feel like it's, it's lonely, but I just, it could be, I just didn't meet the right people. I'm not saying they're not here. I just no, no, but th- to be honestly, I mean, I guess it's looking like the resources that are, uh, that are enabled for for any comic creator from Canada are a little bit limited because everybody else is over here. That's right. One it's, good thing though is is I've uh, all my prices on Kickstarter are Canadian. So yes, they when are. You, when you look at like the all in package, which is like all the covers, all the variants, like I think I have it for like I don't know eighty bucks. I can't remember. That's for like yeah. six books, all the different covers, and it's that's sixty US. Yeah. So it's like 20 bucks off. So it's crazy. So I actually went through the page recently, like two days ago or yeah, something or yesterday, actually, it might've been yesterday. And I put CAD. So everybody knows who's looking at it in the States that these are Canadian dollars. So, um, and I try to put, I try to push the fact that our ship, the shipping I offer is so cheap compared to other comic book Kickstarters. And we tried our best. And in some cases we eat the cost, but like I, I keep going back to this one example where I backed a book in uh, from an American creator, an American indie creator. And I backed this book I want to support and I bought the physical copy. And to ship that one physical copy here is 28 bucks. Wow. And I was like, holy crap. You know how much it costs me to ship six books to you? $12. Canadian. So that's like $10 for you. $10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what it cost me to ship six books. I think I can ship up to 12 books and the price won't move. Right. So I can ship that. I can, so you can buy two all ins. It'll be like a thick, heavy package. Won't change the price at all for you. Exactly. But uh, it's actually cheaper for me to ship some places in the States than it is to ship within Canada. Mm. Hey, that's, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so now eight, you, you call this an eight issue miniseries. Yeah. yeah so, so, we're, so we're at the midway point. Yep. So right. for, for those of us that, I mean, of course, we uh, right now the Kickstarter is live, so nobody has this book preferably in their hands. It now is usually the point where something very big happens out of like the middle of the book. Do we expect a heavy turn that's going to happen? Yeah, that's where I was talking about earlier, where book four, where in book four, that's when things kick up a notch. So it's like we went from like, a goofy friends episode with like tinge, like a hint of yeah. darkness over there. But yep. now it's getting closer and closer. And book four is when it starts to take off. So that's the, it's like the midpoint, like boom, it flips. And then from that point on, things are starting going to start getting a little crazier and crazier, but we don't let go of that. Like it's friends, like not, not the show friends, but it's like these two guys, these buddies that are like, um, working through this together one's a vampire the other guy is his like support buddy and they're trying to get through this and along the way they're meeting all these new they're getting to all these new relationships they're meeting these vampires they're meeting these mob guys like their their life was just normal and now it's gone upside down and it gets more and more it just keeps going head over heels every oh, episode God. every issue from now from now on so i can imagine it's probably going to get that more now now are we talking about a lot more violent <laughs> or are we talking about like the chaos is just going to ensue. The chaos ensues, but you do see more violence because uh, up until now, the violence has been, I've described it as there's m- some mild decapitation uh, because it's very cartoony. It's there's no, yeah. like there's no guts or gore in it. There's no nudity in it. Uh, like the it's, there's still no nudity in it going forward, but there is a bit of gore coming up. It's not outrageous. It's not outrageous. Uh, not that I have necessarily anything against gore. I'm just trying no, to, I was about stay to say I don't, in, I don't think there's a problem in tune with what the the comic where the comic book is at. So when it goes there, I wanted it to make sense. So when it does go there in in the issues three and four, it makes sense because the way the vibe of the comic book uh through the eyes of the reader changes if they're reading what Jack is doing, Jack and Tim, mm. the two guys, uh, it, and versus if they're reading what the mob is doing. So the vibe of the comic book changes because it's like 
you get pulled into their world and jack's world is like man i was just a guy you know doing my yeah. thing i was minding my business and issue my business got bit by a vampire and i gotta deal with this my friend's an idiot he's trying to help me out like that's the vibe you're in with him yeah. and then you switch over to the uh the mob guys and they're very serious they're not like cracking jokes uh they're very like the they're very much the the spoiled big babies, but they're very <laughs> serious. Kind of like Tony Soprano is very serious, but I'd say Mr. DeLuca. Imagine when uh, those mob guys are like when they're pissed off and they're just when they get scary. That's where Mr. DeLuca rests, right? He's right. there. Like you never see him like just chill because the moment you meet him in issue two is the first time you see him he's losing his mind on somebody on the phone so it gives you a good idea of like the intensity of this character right so you'll see like an event happen with like uh tim and jack and then they introduce uh nick and casper and nick and casper are, are kind of like um imagine the sons of anarchy if they were oh, yeah turned into vampires like that's kind of what they're like so they're they like a good fight but they'd be like yeah that was a good fight you know, right that was a good fight like they'd high five you know they'd be they're good like, with that it. was they're, pretty good talk about it. yeah but the um and that's kind of like the situation they get into you very much get that vibe and then you introduce mr deluca and rico his number two these are like the two top mob guys in the book um you introduce them and when it's just them you mm -hmm. see how the violence in their world is at a diff different level. Right. So they're very much, they don't, if they got into a fight, they wouldn't be like, yeah, that was a good one. They're gonna, they'd be like, I can't believe you make me do this shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's, that's the reality. So I try very hard to, Oh, not, I try to, when I, tr when I write it, I very much want to bring the reader into like, this is their world now. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're reading them, when you're seeing them on page, you're in their world. And I want you to feel like you're in their world. So it's not just Jack's voice coming out of another character's mouth. It's very important to me that each character has their own voice. Now is, are all eight issues finished? So <laughs> uh, I wrote eight scripts. Yep. The lot, I need to tighten up, uh, like clean them up for Marco. Uh, book seven and eight are just a mess of like they're written how i write them for myself and then they make sense but then for him to follow it as an actual script i need to clean it up but right. book eight needs to be tightened up a bit so book eight might swell up into a bigger book or it's possible i'll sneak in a book nine but that'll be on the same kickstarter but mm -hmm. i'm going to try to keep it an eight and just make eight a thicker book um because i just need to i just need to tweak it a bit so that's the last script but it's it is written. Absolutely. And look, that's great. Now, outside of this, because yeah. once you once you're doing your your eight issues of this, and this is this has already been a phenomenal book. As a matter of fact, I think when you did one and two, it was a project we love on Kickstarter that was already like established for your first yeah. go round. That's a, that's amazing. Yeah, it's great. And this one got it too the day before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like to do your first couple of runs and then all ready to get that automatically. That's showing that Kickstarter is like, yo, this is already an amazing project. Definitely go look at it, and then everybody just basically eyes are glued to it. The algorithm changes. So, is there anything outside of this? Once these eight issues are done, is it any other genre that you maybe wanted to jump into? Yeah, once these eight issues are done, well, there's two actually. Okay. Uh, one, ironically, is I want to do a kids book. Okay. Because uh, I have a three year old, so I'd like to. I want. I'd like to write a book for him. Uh, and the other is I have another story um, that is kind of like a, it leans in, it leans sci-fi a little bit thrillery. Okay. Um, and that's a story that I have and there's no, no joking around. So I've written a few scripts for that. I've written, I think of like two scripts for that. Mm -hmm. And then I have the story outlined, but I don't have, the dialogue of it written it's just basically like here's i wrote an idea and i started going into it and i was like okay cool i'm at a place where i'm gonna let this sit yeah and then i have to go back to it so i'm gonna go back to it and uh cur currently the the code name is called japan story um okay. only because japan plays a huge part in the story and i was like i don't want to 
clog up my mind with thinking of like details like what's this story called so i just called it the japan story uh, i'd be happy to say that's one of my favorite places i was stationed there for eight years uh, oh. eight months i'm sorry eight months uh around 2002 nice i went to japan once for work and i'd love to go back i was so busy I, doing like meetings, absolutely but i want to go back i had very little touristy time yeah yeah i want to go back for sure i was stationed there for a while and i'll tell you it was one of the best times i've had in my life good times it was, good it was time. great it was great yeah. So Mark, Mark, thank you for doing this with me. Uh, the book, of course, is doing mighty well. As a matter of fact, it's already passed its goal uh, for for Kickstarter already for issues three and four. So congratulations on that. Uh, so is if anybody wanted to get their hands on one and two already now that the now that the campaign was done already for one and two, how could they get their hands on that? Well, um, funny enough, I actually forgot to close. There's a late pledge if you go to the old. If you go to the old uh, Kickstarter, you can still find it. Just so-called living. Just uh, the just, I, There's a late that, pledge button. That's, that, that, that's the new new edition that Kickstarter had, the late pledge button. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's a late pledge button there. and um, But if you want books one, two, three, and four, I have a catch-up package in this Kickstarter, and it's actually cheaper to get it that way because there's a $5 discount. Nice. So, yeah, so it's that if you, you can catch up. So if you miss the first ones, you can get the physical run and just go through it. And if anybody wants to try it out, book one is always free digitally on comics. All uh, sorry, global comics. Always global comics is, 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 is amazing. It's an amazing platform. Yeah. It, it's great. It's great. Those guys are great. Absolutely. Mark, thank you for doing this with me again, man. This is, this has been great. Well, oh, thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. So for everybody out there, uh, so-called living is now still live on Kickstarter for the next, I believe, 21 days. Correct. Yep. Yep. It ends. Uh, it ends on Halloween. All right. So everybody, please go out there and get that. Of course, we're already past the goal. So we it, we are now hitting those stretch goals. So you, you know, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some some variants and some digital bundles probably added a little bit soon there, Mark. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how the campaign <laughs> goes. <laughs> No promises. Let's we'll see how the campaign goes. <laughs> All right. Well, once again, thank you. Thank you for doing this with me. Uh, for everybody out there, please go out there and uh, check out So Called Living right now, Kickstarter right now. Uh, for myself, James Grandmaster Facts Boys, for everybody here at the Facts Project, Mark Maya, thank you. We are out.